Firebase, this is Chris Esplin, and I'm going to cover what I'm calling Firestack development. So I got this idea from Michael Bly, uh, formerly of DivShot fame, and um, this stands for Firebase Interface Reactors. Fire, fire Firebase Interface Reactors. Uh, the idea being that Firebase um, is the core of your of your stack. Your in, you have a client, which is your interface. Then you have reactor functions, which are basically your server functions. Um, and I'm going to show you how this works. I've been using it for about a year. Uh, this is my preferred my my preferred stack, my preferred method of development, period, end. I don't actually use HTTP REST APIs anymore. I don't really need Express or any of that fun stuff in Node. I just use Firebase as my message bus between my server and my clients. And this is fantastic because it scales really nicely. And I don't have to worry as much about security. You don't have to worry about running my um, sophisticated node processes with SSL. I can just simply run a node process in the background that listens to a WebSocket, a Firebase WebSocket. And I get WebSocket speed with none of the HTTP handshaking. Uh, HTTP, I mean, it's not necessarily that slow. And HTTP2 will be much, much faster. But right now, most HTTP requests have quite a bit of handshaking involved. WebSockets, not so much. They can be extremely quick. So I'm going to show you how I do this and um, introduce you to Firestack development. I think it should take off. I think this is the way we should be developing for web. I really do. It's so nice. Um, so yeah, here's my chance. I'm going to try to convert you to this. So yeah, no more REST APIs. We're just going to use Firebase from now on. Okay, so how does this, how does this work? Okay, first let's look at let's look at uh, my index.html. Here we go. Firestack architecture in action. Uh, it's pretty. Let's see how big I can get this. All right. Um, it's a pretty straightforward little index.html file. I've got a form with a button that you click and it calls submit me or submit form, uh, and I've got Firebase initialized right here. Okay. So the next thing, this is, this is an important step. I'm going to do firebase.auth on auth state changed. So I'm listening to auth state and that will return a user. If there is a user authenticated, I'll get a user. Otherwise, I'll get null. Now if I get null, I'm going to force an anonymous sign in. So firebase.auth sign in anonymously. This creates an anonymous relationship with Firebase, which can I can then use for my security. If I don't have any relationship with Firebase, I have no way of creating a secure transaction with Firebase. Therefore, anyone, any hacker, anybody can just sit down and listen in on my transactions. That would be lame. So I'm going to take advantage of my security rules and create an anonymous sign-in. Okay, sign in anonymously. Next, clicksref. Um, I'm going to say... Let's call this instead of presses. I can call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it clicks. Okay, so clicks ref. Q's test slash clicks. That'll be my ref. And on, on form submission, I'm going to then create a click ref, an individual ref for this click. It's going to be clicks ref.child, and my child is going to be my UID for the current user. So that'll be some string that will that is uh, generated when I sign in anonymously. That helps me create an anonymous yet secure transaction with Firebase. All right, now I'm going to listen to child added events on this click ref. You'll notice I can save that out as a handler, which I can then use for my off later. So click ref, uh, the dot on function returns your, returns your handler function, your callback function. So I can very easily call dot off on that later. Okay, and the way I'm going to do this is my server is going to change a key, either a response key or an error key on this object once I set it. So let's set an object first to see what it looks like. So I'm gonna click, there, click me. All right, there we go, presses. Oh, I still have presses. Okay, I switch it back to presses. All right, so it took my UID from my anonymous session with Firebase and pushed a random number to random, okay? So that's right here. I did click ref.set 
random is math.random, okay? Now, I haven't started up my server yet. I'm gonna start the server up in just a second and you'll be able to watch it act on this node. Okay, so here's my server, firestack.js. It's, just, I mean, you've got a little bit of, I mean, okay, ignore this top part. This is me just serving up the demo and initializing Firebase. So this stuff here is all unimportant. What's important is this little handler function. Firebase.database ref queues test slash presses dot on child added. Whenever a child is added to this presses, I'm listening at the presses level, not at the at this lower level for this one, at the presses level. So I'm gonna get this whole object, this 5NUWLR. That whole object will be the child that was added. Okay, so then I'm gonna call snap.val to get my click object, which is just gonna be random. Um, just have that random key. And so if click.random is less than 0.5, I'm gonna say snap.ref child response set is greater than half true. Else child dot um, ref dot child error dot set is greater than half false. And this is just sort of an arbitrary little action I decided to take. You know, you have your own logic in here. And then I'm immediately going to remove the ref. I immediately delete the thing because I don't need it anymore. The transaction's done. So my server is gonna keep itself cleaned up. It's gonna clean up all these, these objects. On the client side, I'm listening for changes to this 5NUWLR object. Now, when I add random, when I set the random key down here, I'm gonna fire off a child out of the event. That's why we're gonna skip it. That'll get skipped. But when either a response or an error node gets added, we're gonna handle that. And we'll handle it, you know, intelligently according to the logic of our app. Okay, so let's see how this looks. Let's run it. I'm gonna run this in my debugger. All right, debugging, debugging. Is it listening? Oh, there, it listened, it responded, bam. And we got over here, response is greater than half, true. Okay, so let's refresh this page so you can see all my, you can see the whole thing from scratch. So first, it will anonymously auth, is anonymous true, great. So now I have an anonymous session. This time it's A-I-Z-A, -A, whatever, that's my UID. Now I click, you'll see it skips the uh, child out of the event random because that one I don't want to deal with, but then it gets the is greater than half true response. Here, I can drag this out here to the side and watch how quickly this thing does its business. There we go. So we're pushing random numbers, we're getting results. It's just that fast. Fantastic. Now. Like I said, we gotta have security in place. So really important that we address our security rules. So under queues test here, I've got security rules. For any queue, and it's a wild card, so I can call it presses, I can call it clicks, I can call it anything I like. Call it peanut butter, doesn't matter. That'll be wild carded. Then the UID is the next part of that path. As long as that UID matches the auth UID, which I got from my anonymous auth, I give it read and write access. That's how you secure your interaction, your anonymous interaction with Firebase. All right. Okay, so this thing works. We're secure because we've got this uh, security rule here that's managing my queues test node. Um, what else is it to cover? Um, couple Little gotchas you gotta watch out for with this sort of model. Um, it scales really nicely because Firebase scales really nicely. But if you're not careful and you have and you decide to like spin up a whole bunch of these a bunch of these processes, you can have multiple processes listening to one single node. That can cause a problem because that child out of the event will get called multiple times. You could call your reactor function multiple times for a single child out of child out of the event. There are Pretty easy ways around this. Uh, one is to use Firebase Q, which is a basically a system to handle this that the Firebase team, I don't know if they use it anymore, they used to use it. Uh, and it puts a little bit of structure around these reactor functions and lets you scale it out really nicely. So I use Firebase Q, have for a long time. It's been great for me. Highly recommend this stack. 
Um, ask me questions in the, in the comments. I'm gonna write something up about how to use this and hopefully more people can discover the glory of using WebSockets instead of HTTP. You just don't need the HTTP much anymore. It's, it's incredible and I mean, because the SDK is identical between iOS and Android and the web, all you got to do is interact with that SDK, the Firebase SDK. You don't need any more HTTP uh, or XML HTTP requests or anything fancy like that in your client. It really simplifies your stack. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.